Hi everyone, welcome to This White World, my name is Joe and in this video I'm going to do story times. So story time is recounting some of the stories on my adventures and some of my misadventures as well. So what was this trip? This trip was me going from London to Beijing while Mongolia solo using trains only. So what was the route? The route was going from London to Belgium via Eurostar to Germany, go to Poland, overnighted via Belarus to Russia, through Russia on a Trans-Siberian, going through Mongolia and then after that to Beijing. Then afterwards to Prague, I flew, I just overlanded all the way back using a combination of trains again and um, cars and buses. So how did this all begin? So I found out about the whole Trans-Siberian uh, quite a few years ago and uh, watched a documentary thought it was pretty amazing some of the history behind it saw some youtube videos and i thought oh my god this sounds pretty epic i have to check it out did some research and i realized you can basically go all the way to beijing on trains and that's exactly what i did in 2014 the summer i quit my job and did a big trip what is the actual trans-siberian so the trans-siberian refers to the train lines that goes from moscow to Vladivostok, and it is 9289 kilometers or 5772 miles if you want to do the whole thing in one sitting it takes a whole seven days which i probably wouldn't recommend okay quick 30 second history lesson of the trans-siberian so it all started in the late 1800s when tsar alexander iii wanted to build a railway across russia the construction started in 1891 and the first version was completed in 12 years in 1903 so one of the ways they approached building such a gigantic railway was to actually start construction in multiple parts and hopefully meet in the middle. And because the Trans-Siberian was underfunded in its first version, they had to uh, not use dynamite when going through mountains there. So they used just pickaxes and that must have taken forever. I'm still so surprised they managed to complete it in 12 years. And rather than actually go through the mountains right by Lake Baikal, they actually decided to build a ship to cross the actual lake. In winter time, Lake Baikal freezes over. So what that means is that they actually had to buy a specific boat that was basically an ice smasher. So how long did it take? So in total, it took two months to do the whole trip. It took 10 days to get from London to Moscow. Um, I didn't like rush through it. I probably could have taken about half the time. I took a month to go from Moscow all the way to Beijing. You could do it a lot quicker. I stopped at quite a few places. I worked with a very, very good travel agent called Real Russia, I thoroughly recommend it. You can either book through them using their agency services or you can actually also go online. You can actually pay for them to send you over the tickets. If you're interested in seeing my complete itinerary, including all the costs I incurred, you should check out this Google spreadsheet I created that documented pretty much everything. So in a couple of places, I spent a lot more money in places that I really shouldn't have done. I've made notes in the spreadsheet just to help you guys. And if you have any questions at all, please feel free to add to the comments. I'll respond to all of them, give you guys a helping hand, and hopefully other people watching this video can um, learn from all your questions as well. So on the Trans-Siberian itself, the first half was pretty uneventful when it comes to the scenery. It's just loads and loads of forests. The more interesting part is when it changes to the second half where it does open up a bit and you can see more of the landscapes and then changes to the Mongolian steppes. Once you go to Mongolia into China, suddenly in China you see all these cloud uh, mountains and it really feels like something from one of those old Kung Fu films or something. Novo Sobusk. One of the stop off points in Russia was actually a place called Novosibirsk, and I had some really, really fun memories of Novosibirsk. Uh, so, Novosibirsk means basically New Siberia. When I was in Novosibirsk, I stayed in this really amazing hostel, and the manager is pretty hilarious lass. This is a big dedication to you, Victoria. You should definitely check out the hostel. The name escapes me at the moment, but I'll add a link in my uh, notes. I ended up watching Star Wars in Russian, which was a bit random. And whilst I was actually watching, a couple of people actually rocked in. Turns out they were doing the Mongolian rally. What I found out a bit later whilst I was having a curry, because you know, I'm in the middle of Siberia. I mean, why not have a curry? Seems like a good idea, right? So during the course of the meal, turns out these guys are from London. And I thought, oh, awesome. Whereabouts in London are you guys from? South East London. I was like, oh, awesome, really? Turns out they're like a 10 minute walk from where I live. So let me get this right. I've come all the way to Russia in this fairly small town and then suddenly I meet these guys. The world really is such a small, small place. Oh, and another thing about Novosibirsk, it seems to be the center point for Irish dance schools and Irish pubs. I think along one road, I think I saw at least two or three Irish dance 
schools very random and well that's the end of part one story time in my next video story time i'm going to be covering stuff about mongolia china and the interesting story about the border crossing you should definitely check out make sure you don't miss it and subscribe i love to hear your comments so feel to add a comment like this video and i'll see you in the next video bye